on a field by York, Nebraska. Uh, this is a new install on a rotational corn and bean field. We're installing a Netafim uh, DripNet PC pressure compensating tape. What the pressure compensating dripper does is it allows us to get the same flow regardless of the change in elevation in the field. Each system is uniquely designed for the specific application. So in this specific field, what we're doing is we're using a 0.1 dripper, which means that it emits 0.1 gallons per hour out of each single emitter. We use the 0.1 emitter in this particular case because we're able to provide a more economical solution for the grower. It decreases installation cost. We're able to only put eight zones out here instead of having to put 16. So when we show up at a field, we bring our um, pallets full of tape. They're all prepackaged in plastic. We have guys that start to unpackage that and prep those rolls to put on our plow. Once you put the uh, reel up onto the shank, you need to cut it loose and then thread it down through and pull it out of the bottom of the shank. Typically, we'll pull about six to seven feet out of the bottom of the shank in order to tie those dripper lines together. So you'll tie multiple lines together and then you'll sink the plow into the ground and take off. In this case, we have seven shanks, so we like to have three people on the plow so that each person looks at no more than two or three reels. And they're responsible for making sure that that tape is spooling off properly. The GPS is um, on the tractor ensures that we stay in our rip lines and that our tape is where it needs to be. The next step will be to come in with a trencher and trench the holes for the submain lines. We will dig out where every tape is, we'll dig a little shell, and we'll proceed to drill a hole in the pipe, put a gooseneck riser made out of hard tubing, and tie into that tape line. After we tie in every tape line, we'll backfill, and then we will pour a concrete pad over on the well, and then we will install the filter pan, as well as a valve bank control unit, and a, a structure to protect all the components at the filter pad. When we turn on the pump, the water's pulled up from the well, goes through a chemical check valve, and then through a water meter. An injection pump adds fertilizer and or crop protection chemicals. The sand media filtration keeps organics and sediments that are often found in surface water and or well water from entering and clogging the drip lines. It then passes through a screen filter that serves as a backup layer filtration to the sand media filters. At this point, the water leaves the filtration setup, passes through the field riser valves, and then to the drip lines that are buried below the surface. Run times for each zone are determined based on zone size and the time it takes to fully pressurize each zone. Final step once everything is installed with the system is to, to make sure that we don't have any leaks and that the flush lines are working correctly. And then the farmer's able to come right in and plant. Drip irrigation allows the producer to get the most out of his field. By spoon feeding your crop and giving it the nutrients it needs when it needs it, you're able to make sure that your crop never has a bad day. And that's something that they can only do with drip irrigation.